Um, hello, my name is Bolahan Obisason. I'm Artistic Director and Joint CEO here at Brixton House, and I'm in conversation with... Waleed Akbar, writer of Kabul Goes Pop. Waleed, can you tell me about why you wrote this play and what does it mean to you? So I think years ago, I read the real story of the presenters of the first youth music program in Afghanistan after the war. And um, I just sort of became obsessed with the story. Okay. It was... Um, when was that? When, when, when were they sort of um, running the station? Oh, so like, I think the piece uh, ran in 2006, but I must have read it like 2010. Okay. Um, I think someone forwarded it to me. But um, it was just amazing because there were these young people who were obsessed with music and music videos. And I was as well, growing up, I was always watching MTV. It was a thing you did. You sort of came home from school and then you ran to the TV and put it on. And it held so much significance, music videos. And so that made me think about like how these people who I'm supposed to have nothing in common with, who are halfway around the world living in this sort of supposedly war-torn country, we like bonded over this. And then um, the story touched on so many other things that I was sort of interested in, you know, uh, what we mean when we liberate countries, um, the rights of uh, refugees. And so I just, that story lived with me. And then I was like, I want to make something with this. And that's how the seed for Carpool Goes Pop was born. Amazing. And I believe you wrote the play during lockdown, or at least I got sent it um, during lockdown. Um, what was that process like? And where did you even begin to write the play from? Yeah, so I was sort of laboring uh, writing the play as a one person show, which seems to be my thing whenever I write a play. <laughs> they all start as one person shows, and I'm like, hmm, yeah. I was like, there's seven characters in this, but I could play them all. Yeah. But um, actually, to be fair, while I was sort of writing it, I was having no joy writing it because it just, it just wasn't working for me. And um, then I hit upon the idea of making it a two hander and having the two presenters there. And then it just sort of became fun to write on the page and it sort of wrote itself. So I made that discovery at the beginning of 2020. And then I kind of <laughs> finished this in the first lockdown. And um, it was a bit of a, a lifesaver. Like, you know, it gave me some structure and it gave me something to work on and a way to be creative. Um, but then came sending it out into the world at a time when we didn't know that theatre was going to exist. So it, sort of sending it to people and getting them to read it and not knowing like what landscape we were going to be entering into. And um, that's when I sent it over to you and we had some discussions and you've been like an early supporter of the place. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it because um, primarily I thought it was looking at a really specific um, part of the world that I, you know, had very little information about, as much as also looking at it from a very um, playful and quite, you know, in some cases, really authentic um, um, depiction of the kind of um, interest and the fascination with, you know, Western kind mm. of um, culture and Western iconography and, you know, the iconography of time being, you know, um, pop music and, you know, all those um, brilliant artists that you know, we all grew up with and had sort of, um, you know, at some point sang their songs or, mm. you know, being um, influenced by, um, you know, their, their kind of prominence within the charts um, as well. So, you know, there was already that sort of playful approach in which you gave me access into their world and into the world of these two Muslim characters who you know, were just obsessed with, you know, um, pop music and, mm. you know, those American artists. And um, and for me, that was something that I was like, actually, I think other people will be interested in seeing this and, mm. and be quite um, invested in what happens to them, what happens to their friendship, but then also how um, the, the politics around, you know, where they were trying to, um, um, celebrate their emancipation and their freedom from was still dictating and dominating exactly who they are and their expression of identity. Um, and, you know, I <clears throat> I also didn't think it was for me to direct. And so, you know, um, Anna, who is directing the play, is someone who I, you know, um, came in contact with um, while 
whilst I was on social media come back mm. and I was like um, I'd love for Anna to come and be a part of the um, you know identity of Brixton House and you know hopefully um, being someone who can um, bring out the best vision that you have for the play as well and I hope that's working and well for you and the rest of the team yeah no definitely she's a she's the right person for this play and also like going back to what you're talking about like she was very much wanting to explore the kind of american soft imperialism that sort of comes out so the, with the branding and all that sort of stuff and it's just a really great energy in the room and kind of really got all the music and the references so it has been a great pairing so thanks for putting us in touch no worries um in some ways you know the play feels very specific and it feels of a time in history, in recent history, um, what um, aspect of it, um, you know, of, Car of Carbo Goes Pop, you think is relevant to um, society now that uh, people will be able to draw on or at least be familiar with? Yeah, so the play is sort of set in the mid noughties. Um, so it's obviously after the American invasion and it sort of happens in a space of time where the Afghan, the, the Afghan people thought that the society might move in a different direction. Like there was this little opportunity, this window where maybe they could move it in a kind of Western direction, or at least these characters thought that, but actually the world wasn't, the world around them wasn't ready to go with them. And it kind of happened, it kind of has metaphors for the end of that invasion as well, because it talks about why was America there and what is freedom? Um, and what would you know we in the West accept as freedom and what do we accept as freedom for people in these countries and you know there was this moment where Biden made his speech about leaving and it was like well we were never there for humanitarian reasons but that wasn't the kind of rhetoric they were using at the time right it was all about women's liberation uh, women's liberation and that seems like it was a bit of an excuse and also so, sort of this play writing it in 2020 not realizing that both Afghanistan and Britney Spears, who you know is kind of a big motif of the play, were going to be the biggest stories of 2021. And um, so yeah, so just you know, I'm very on the, on the pulse. <laughs> very on the pulse, I am. <laughs> um, so what would you um, expect audiences to potentially take away from the play um, from your perspective? I mean, I really hope that they enjoy the music and the fun and the joy of these two characters and celebrate their friendship. Uh, but also, I think it's really easy to kind of other people and hopefully this sort of humanizes them. And, and like, there's a bond through the music to be like, that could have been me. Like, it's so easy. Like, it's not just someone somewhere else. And I think we're sort of seeing that a bit at the moment where like the difference between brown and white asylum seekers and refugees at the moment, right? Um, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and I guess, you know, one of the pertinent questions that I know is on everybody's lips and minds is um, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, or Shakira, which one? I mean, it's going to have to be Britney for me every time. Yeah. What about yourself? Like, I'm going to ask that tough question right back to you. I mean, Shakira is hipster online, but <laughs> I would say that I think Christina Aguilera <laughs> might have just, you know, picked the person. And um, what's your favourite Christina Aguilera song? Oh my goodness, now you're really testing me. Um, uh, what was that one that she did with... Um, oh, Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> it, has it has to be, right? It has to be. Um, yeah, so um, tell us when Carble Goes Pop starts here at Brixton House. Carble Goes Pop starts on May the 11th and is on for like three or four weeks, so you should definitely come and watch it. Mm -hmm.